My name is Margaret Chiroge, a counseling psychologist by profession. And day-to-day -day work, I help those people who have gone uh, through trauma and also those people who are severely addicted, uh, affected by the issues of addiction and alcoholism. Actually, that is my area of specialization. Uh, what normally happens when someone goes uh, to the treatment center after you are assessed eh, and uh, they see that uh, you have a problem with alcoholism, one thing, the first thing is normally detox. They normally clear your system eh? and then upon assessment they will also know whether you have another comorbid and then they'll give you medication. Of course you are going to be reviewed by a psychiatric doctor. They'll give you medication in regards to what you're suffering from apart from the issue of addiction. And then from there you now start going through counseling and that is where I said you'll get a psychoeducation where you are taught what are the good and the bad sides of the alcohol. And also you are taken through individual counseling where now you open up and talk about what are these issues eh, that were making you to get into alcoholism. And also we call your family so that we can integrate them into the uh, treatment. And even as you are moving out, we also prepare you so that you can be integrated back to the society. If it is work, you, you can be able to transit properly to your workplace. Treatment actually encompasses a lot of things because, uh, for example, like uh, what I'm currently doing is that uh, I'm using a biopsychosocial model of treatment. Eh? In that, eh, when someone comes and then we do an assessment, we realize that uh, probably someone has an addiction and probably also has a comorbid. That is where we incorporate the psychiatric doctor, meaning that this particular person uh, will go through medical aided therapy, taking medication, for example, for something like uh, depression or anxiety. And also, we also do something that we call detox, that is cleaning the system of this particular person. But all this will take place upon assessment. Psychotherapy, a very, very important uh, tool or component uh, treatment within the addiction uh, therapy because uh, again, we normally say without, uh, without counseling, you'll like be doing zero work. So counseling is very, very important. And, and in counseling, we normally do individual counseling sessions. We also do group therapy sessions. And also we train these people life skills or social skills to help them uh, to reintegrate back to the society so treatment we also involve uh, the there are people and we also call them for families for sessions that we normally call family therapy sessions where we also teach their next of kings or the people that they are living with how to live with such kind of a person so treatment is very broad and has got a lot of dynamics You know addiction by itself, eh? addiction by itself actually it's a process. For example, you know you don't, you don't just wake up one morning and you become addicted, but you started, for example like those people who drink beer, you start uh, probably when you are growing uh, young, eh? you start tasting something which is in the house and then from there you start saying okay I'll be taking like once in a blue moon like on Fridays only, then from there you stop taking on Fridays, you say now every other weekend I'll be taking it eh? and then from there you feel that uh, I can no longer function without alcohol. What you'll do is that before you uh, attend any duty, you start taking, and by that time now we say that you are addicted. But again, we, da we, jo we just don't say that you are addicted, eh? but you go through assessment. We do a lot of assessment for us to say that uh, you are addicted. And there are several criteria that we use. Eh? Actually, we look at uh, almost 11 components in the DSM-5, which is our guiding tool in uh, line with the treatment of addiction. So we don't just say that you're addicted, eh? but we, we look at several components. Not even in morgues, eh? yeah. everywhere you find people. It, it's a coping mechanism. Uh, what we, we, we try to do, especially when someone comes to the treatment center or when you are treating someone, you try and establish eh, what is uh, the relationship be between the intake of the substance, either it is marijuana or it's, uh, it's alcohol, why is this person taking, is there a reason behind or it is just taking for fun. But again, when someone becomes addicted, eh, actually now becomes like uh, you can no longer function without using the substance because as you take it, eh, 
uh, for example, those people who take marijuana, you find that they are taking for relaxation. But why do you want to feel relaxed? Because there is something that probably some emotional distress that you are going through. In normal circumstances, you cannot be able to cope without using the substance. Likewise, uh, for example, if you have a very stressful life, that is the reason that probably you would feel, let me take one or two in the evening so that I can be able to sleep. But uh, we advise people or we tell people, you don't necessarily need this substance or the alcohol for you to be able to function normally. For example, like dealing with stress, which is the best way of dealing with stress. You can come from work, do some exercise and by then your body will relax. You can also eat healthy if you eat healthy and take generally take care of yourself. Take your time to reflect. Take your time even to reconnect with your God. Take time to reconnect with your family. All those will help you to cope with uh, situations in life because again uh, stress is part and parcel of us. Eh? It's only to know how to cope and to live with it. Can addiction lead to madness? Actually, we don't talk of madness, but we, we normally talk of induced psychosis. Eh? That is now when in a layman language, in Urona, people will point fingers at you and start saying that that particular person is mad. But it is true. Uh, yes, it can lead because uh, the moment you take and you have, I don't know whether you have seen those people who, when they have not taken alcohol, you find that they are really trembling. Eh? Tremble until now you give this particular person something to drink. Eh? That is when the trembling will stop. And that is where now you are finding, for example, like the teacher that you are telling me, that this teacher must take something in order for him, like they normally say to, in Kiswahili, kufungua lock. Yeah. <laughs> that is what they normally say. Because uh, he has been addicted to this particular substance. And what this substance has done, eh, it has actually worked negatively on his brain. And there is nothing more you can do. And that is why for sometimes you find, eh, even families become confused the only thing they'll do is to continue adding the substance that this particular person is is taking why because they don't know how to help this particular person and that is why we normally tell people seek for treatment because if you stay with this particular person the only thing that you will do you can only give this particular person substance so that he can continue living his his life normally because again if you don't take them for treatment when someone starts start shaking eh, this person uh, it can become very fatal and can even die out of seizure like the case that uh, happened, there are so many people who died eh, of alcoholism when the president uh, announced that uh, alcohol should be, you know, should be taken away. There's, there were so many fatalities. Reason being, these people did not get uh, professional help. Because someone who has an addiction problem and you take them to just a normal hospital and not a rehabilitation center which deals with addiction, eh, it's not okay. That is where psychiatry comes in and people who are addiction professionals come in to help these particular people. And um, if you stay with someone who is addicted, in fact you can stay, for example, like the way I'm here. Now, and then this particular person, especially when someone might be developing those, uh, we call them the withdrawal symptom, that is when you know that someone is developing these psychosis, eh? will start seeing things that you are not seeing. We call them hallucinations. Or some people may have uh, the grandiose building things which are not there. Some people may have uh, anxiety or being paranoid. Hmm? always looking and thinking that they are being followed a normal person you cannot think like that and all this we normally say that they are induced by the substances of choice that they are taking so yes addiction can induce psychosis or the madness in a layman's language Uh, there is uh, one incident I can say that uh, I really felt good after walking through with that particular patient. Eh? It was a young girl, actually a campus uh, student, and this girl had uh, gone through multiple traumas. Eh? She had gone through sexual abuse at a very early age, eh? and for her to escape the pain that comes with a uh, rape and all these. Eh? She got into a relationship at a very young age and that relationship actually turned out to be abusive. 
Now that was also another trauma by itself. Now from there, to escape from what has been happening in her life, she started taking marijuana for her to feel like she has relaxed. And she also started uh, taking alcohol for a very long time, for a period of like four years. That's how she was trying to cope by the time that I was coming to meet her. But I thank God today because I'm talking of a, of a different case because uh, right now actually she's uh, actually doing her third year in the university and I'm so happy about that and I'm still working with her to date. So that's a very successful case I would say. But that's just only one. Actually there are several. You've worked with someone, gone back to work and actually has become a good ambassador of talking about... Um, talking about the issues or the effect of uh, alcoholism or even going through traumatic life issues. Now, the downside, yeah, I remember some times back, there was uh, one patient that uh, was admitted somewhere that I was working and this particular person actually was had the issue of uh, addiction actually alcohol he was an alcoholic and at the same time had the issue of uh, depression and prior to the admission this particular person had uh, tried committing suicide quite a number of times without success and unfortunately yes he tried committing suicide and unfortunately he died that was a very sad time